So Terry, you actually went and saw Rogue One already. You went to the premiere. I did go to the premiere. I feel so spoiled. I feel so spoiled. Everyone watching is going to be... Very, you guys are angry with me so because this is... If you say one more word that alludes to anything that happens in the movie, we will be furious. Yeah, I want right. to say real quick housekeeping. This is an entirely Rogue One spoiler-free episode. I haven't seen the movie yet. Max hasn't either. I haven't even read our review. No. Yeah, well... Yeah, we're not going near it. Yeah, why um, would yeah, I do that? We wanted to talk to you about what did, what's what's a movie premiere like? Especially, what's a Star Wars movie premiere like? We've got photographic proof that you were there. Yes. Uh, there was an X-Wing there. There was. There you and are. there was a TIE fighter over a bar, which That's was like, amazing. What? I love that series of words. So this is why I said that I'm spoiled. I went to the Force Awakens premiere last year, too. I know, I know. Living that good life down in L.A. Um, surprisingly chilly. But with the thing about a movie of this size is, first of all, there's crazy security. But also, these are huge. Like, this... This one, they took over the Pantages Theater, which mm -hmm. is basically where all the musical theater hmm. performances. So the acoustics were amazing. Like it, it was almost too loud in there, which was great because there's a lot of great action in these movies. But they basically shut down Hollywood Boulevard, okay. a big chunk of it, and yeah, you walk down, and they have these um, big an X-wing. An X-wing, so, yes. Like walk us through, like what's the what's the kind of the setup here? Because I see a lot mm -hmm. of these photos. It kind of looks like just like a fun event. There you are with Joshua Yale. It is. Um, what like you show up. What, you got like a call time. There's like so you is show like up a wedding. Like it, it is. So <laughs> usually what I do at premieres is I'm on the red carpet and I'm doing interviews. This time around we had Naomi Kyle and uh, Kyle O'Connor doing that. So I just got to go for fun and not really work. Uh, so yeah, you show up, you check in, lots of security. Like mm -hmm. I said, you walk down the carpet. Uh, if you're talent, so if you're a, a famous celebrity, mm -hmm. if you're a star of this movie, you're going to walk down the red carpet and do interviews. They basically hit us in every back corner. Like, we were zipping around so we weren't in any camera's way because there also was the StarWars.com live right, stream right. sort of showing what was happening. But the photo that you just put up uh, of us at the end, sort of that gin or so photo op, that's at the very end of the carpet. And God, it was so crowded down there. The people trying to manage this premiere were like, go inside, but you had to give up your phone because oh. obviously they don't want spoilers oh, wow. getting out. So um, where, do, where do they put the phones? Like, do they... They actually, this is like getting very technical, but is they like have them. No, this is what I want to know about. Like, I've never been to one of these things, so it's like fascinating so to be like, what's the... They have a new system. Last year, they just had you like check in and you had to get a number. This time, they put them in these little timed pouches that unlock when you walk out after the okay. film is over. Oh, wow. Uh, Dave Chappelle was like trying to get those things off the ground for comedy shows. So is it, does it have like a little lock on it? Yeah, so it locks and then you go in and so you can keep it on you. You don't have to pick it up later because that caused a lot of crazy lines at Force Awakens mm -hmm. last year. Uh, what was funny, I actually have seen it twice already. Oh, I also I went to a screening on the Disney lot, and that was that had another really funny, surreal circumstance where usually people go to these screenings, they walk out, you talk about it, right? You want to talk about it with people, but because they had four screenings over the course of the day, they had to start the, the screening by saying, please wait until your car is, until you talk about it. There's going to be a line of people waiting to get in. Yeah. Please don't spoil the film, oh, which, right. which is a nice warning for if you guys are seeing it at movie theaters. Oh, I'm totally. Assuming, right? I don't think walk Max out and, and spoil it. Max and I did that last year at The Force Awakens. We went to like the 7 p.m. showing and ran outside, and the 10 p.m. showing was just coming in. We were just yelling all, all, all these different spoilers and things about Han Solo yeah. and yeah. his son. Oops. Yeah. Well, um, oops. So they had cupcakes? They did have cupcakes. Um, these were supposed to be Death Star cupcakes. They sort of almost just, were, but I really liked that like that photo. Like a cupcake. And there were like crazy photo ups. The after party is where things get really okay. surreal. Is that where the TIE Fighter bar was? That's where the TIE Fighter bar was. Uh, and everyone was so excited after this. I mean, I think if you've seen anything about Rogue One, you've seen a lot of really excited mm -hmm. feedback. Uh, and so everyone involved with the movie was so excited. Everyone who saw the movie was so excited that they enjoyed it. I remember after The Force Awakens, everyone came out and we were like, we don't know what how to feel like we yeah. just saw this after all this build up but there was just a really cool vibe uh, and they had really fun photo ops they had one that uh, myself Eric Goldman our TV editor and Joshua Yale our comics editor did where we were like we saved the day like with the Death Star behind us yeah, yeah. And it was it's just like the scare the Scarif background yeah, yeah exactly oh man so I'm that's awesome Scarif. so it, just, it feels like a big party sort of right it is. like it folded is. around a, a movie premiere I know a lot of people get to go and they get to do the stuff before and after but not a lot of them get to see the movie so I think it's really interesting about them taking away sort of your your security rights to sort of start filming it and stuff like that and what's mm -hmm. interesting is you know you're seeing it with the people who made this movie right, right. so yeah. I mean I've gone to a lot of TV premieres and it's sort of the same thing a lot of the the people who make this movie not only the cast, but the writers, the the sound crew, everyone else who's there and being celebrated never gets to see it with a big audience. And this is probably the biggest audience that will see it. Right. I just wanted to be Alan Tudyk, that movie, because every line his droid said, uh, K2SO, like, 
earned like massive laughter. Okay. I was like, he must be living All his right, best you, life. You like, I down did there. It. You're getting close it. to spoiler territory. No, no, <laughs> he no plays Alan Tudyk is in this movie. Spoilers. Okay. All right. What? We, be we excited. Um, so <laughs> I've actually I've been, to, um, I've been to a screening at uh, at ILM before. Yes. And it's really funny there because like you'll be they have you'll a great be there. Theater. Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, they they, they made it. They, they, must, made, yeah. they made surround sound there. So like. Uh, it's really funny because you, there, it's like you always you always wait for the, through all the credits, not just because you know Nick Fury shows up or whatever, right. but because you know it, it goes through all the, the main cast and the principal people, and then it gets to like the guy who made the CG for you, you know Bebop cheer, and Rocksteady right? or whatever, and yeah, and it's like that's like the guys there with his kids, and it's it's really adorable. So um, it's cool you got to do that. Um, I'm I think that the energy surrounding this this Star Wars movie is, is exciting because it. We, we know that it's in good hands. You know, The Force Awakens began to make things right. This is the first time we're getting a Star Wars spinoff. It's a Star Wars story. It's not a standalone thing. And mm-hmm. I'll say it feels different. That's yeah. the be- that's what it needed to be. It needed to feel different. Force Awakens very much felt like mm-hmm. a new hope. I think, you know, I think for the right reasons. You're yeah. doing a reset. You're moving things into a, a new direction, but also right. honoring the old. But this feels like a different yeah. sort of movie. Yeah.